Hello and welcome to the first episode of Microphone and Recording Secrets by Audio College. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the effects chain that I use in every single one of these Audio College videos. In fact, this is the most requested topic from viewers in 2013. Before we begin, keep in mind that a good microphone goes a long way. But the right effects chain can make a bad microphone sound good, a good microphone sound great, and a great microphone sound amazing. For this video, I'm going to already assume that you can route a microphone to a mixer inserts in channel. And also load effects into a mixer insert. Let's begin. For comparison, here's what my voice sounds like with my effects chain off. For comparison, here's what my voice sounds like with the effects chain off. Now, let's run through the effects that I use. You can see here I use two parametric EQ2s, a fruity free filter, fruity compressor, a limiter, and the only non-FL Studios or image line VST that I use is Boot EQ MK2, which you can get for free at varietyofsound.wordpress.com. Downloads, Boot EQ MK2. It is a free VST plugin that can work some magic on any narration track. So let's start from the beginning. Select the microphone input you want in the mixer insert track that you're going to have your narration or vocal. Let's start out with parametric EQ2. Depending on the microphone, you'll get a lot of high frequencies and low frequencies that you don't necessarily need there for a vocal or narration track. Next, I use Fruity Free Filters Noise Remover Preset. This little high shelf can really work some magic if you're in a not so perfect recording environment. As you notice, there's no noise, but at the same time, the high frequencies of my voice are severely cut. Here it is without, here it is with. Some of you might argue that without, my voice actually sounds better. I might agree with you. So that's why we need another parametric EQ to compensate for the high end lost in our high shelf filter. For the second EQ, I use a specially tuned variation of the vocal presence preset. Here it is in the default. My high end sounds a little bit better. Here it is without, here it is with. Let me tune it to my voice. Use my old EQ as a reference. Raising around 2000, so a lot of my consonants can shine through the mix a bit. So now, parametric EQ should have made my voice sound a little bit clearer on the high end. Check one, check one, a little bit better. Next, the dynamics of my voice. As people talk, they normally start out the sentence with a very high volume and then trail off in volume as the sentence continues. A compressor can help fight that, but what you really need to do is practice your narration, write a script, practice it again, record multiple takes, so that the volume of your voice stays constant throughout your entire sentence. Nonetheless, a compressor is a necessity on any vocal track. The first thing you want to worry about is your threshold. I like to set the threshold to just below where the meat of my voice tends to stay when I'm talking. In this case, it's roughly at about negative 18 decibels. So I set the threshold, negative 18, attack zero, release can stay the same, a light ratio, but setting your compressor to vintage also subtly changes how the attack works behind the scenes in the compressor. And then finally, it's the gain. Next, I like to use Boot EQ MK2 to color my voice. This is where the real narration sound effect comes from. So let's load it up, use my original as reference. Now, let's start with the high frequencies. Turn it up just to see what it would sound like and then dial back. There we go. Next, I want to boost where most of the consonants and contour of my voice sit, which is roughly around anywhere between 2000 and 4000 hertz. Boost it just to hear what it would sound like, cool, and then dial back. Next, I want to dial back where most of the power of my voice comes from, which is the lower frequencies between 200 and 350 hertz. Dial it down just to see what it would sound like, but I want to keep a little bit in there so I don't sound tinny. Next, all the subharmonics of my voice aren't really necessary, so I remove them a bit, turn it all the way down, kind of sounds tinny, I want some weight to my voice, so I turn it back up, there we go. Next, the color. Tube on, always add some subtle analog feel to it. Vintage, just because, let's turn the preamp on, turn the low up just a bit to even everything out, and then finally, the master out. When recording narration, I like to have my voice hover around negative three dBs. Negative three to negative six is a good place for the vocal to kind of sit. And finally, I load Fruity Limiter so that if for whatever reason I get really loud, just kind of keeps the peaks in check and make sure there's no distortion of my vocal. 
So to break the effects chain down, you have an initial equalizer to get rid of the extreme frequencies that your microphone picks up. Next, I use Fruity Free Filters Noise Remover Preset because I don't necessarily record in the most perfect environment. Next, I use another parametric EQ2, then a compressor to handle all the dynamics of a voice, and finally, Boot EQ2. This gives me that narration color that I want on my voice, and you can hear the difference. Now my voice sounds like a narration, now it just sounds like a really bad recording. Bad recording, narration, then finally, a fruity limiter just to keep any transients in check. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Click the annotations you see now for more information on topics that I kind of skimmed over for the purpose of keeping this video quick. And also look in the description for free downloads of all the presets I used in this video.